Hello everyone, this is Alex, USA Days. So today we're going to talk about Scrum. Uh, Scrum is one of the methodologies uh, for development and I pretty much call Scrum Agile on steroids. Uh, fun fact, Scrum is not an acronym and uh, Scrum usually works in small teams. There's no classical hierarchy like you would see in a bigger company. There's really no QA department. There's really no dev department. Uh, it's all just one team. So a team consists of six to nine people that may have different members like developers, QA, Scrum Master, Product Manager, DevOps, Designers. It may change from company to company. But uh, small self-organizing teams work uh, on selected project and act like special ops of development with high performance and high delivery speed of features. It's quite common you might wear multiple hats in Scrum and do many things, not only just your responsibilities. All work organized within sprints. Uh, each sprint can last from two to four weeks and typically two weeks. There may be release after each sprint or plant released after several sprints. So sprint is a fixed a set amount of time that is allowed to work on different features. So every time a sprint starts, uh, developers and the team gets together, they select some stories or features that will go into the sprint. Uh, they assess the complexity of those stories and I'll have some visuals for you. And pretty, pretty much they select their workload for for a sprint so for two weeks you can't uh, make spring longer or shorter uh, it has to be a certain amount of time and you know developers and the team has to work around in order to fit that work in that selected amount of time was in a sprint um, if i would give you an analogy how to easily understand sprint think about a vacation your vacation only lasts two weeks and you have to fit a list of things you're going to do during this vacation maybe you want to go visit disneyland maybe you want to go and see your parents uh, but you can only have so many things within those two weeks so um, you have two weeks you select work you do uh, once two weeks are done you report on it pretty much and then you start over uh, again was the new sprint and new features selected to work on that sprint. Uh, Scrum has a unique role called Scrum Master with tasks to with the task to facilitate Scrum process. So it's not a developer, it's not product uh, owner, not product manager, not a QA. But Scrum Master helps uh, in many ways organizing the process. Sometimes they would have help was to organize and release connect team members uh help uh product manager with stories so they you know they participate a lot um scrum has daily morning meetings called stand-ups and stand-ups last 15 minutes during week during uh, which uh, each member reports what they are working on today and if there are any blockers all right, so let's get into some visual representation and uh, a lot of companies work in Jira and Jira looks like this. Uh, you will have a backlog and backlog essentially a collection of stories. So stories are, you know, the features that uh, you need to work on or team needs to work on. Uh, the hierarchy of things goes like this. So if I'll create uh, a ticket, uh, the, you can see there are different styles. Actually, I did not set it up completely yet, but yes, so there's an epic. You see this purple right here? Epic is essentially uh, the collection of stories. So it's a high level uh, module of work that needs to be completed. It's normal that, you know, epic can go in this, uh, from release to release. Work on epic happens, or maybe work on epic might happen within a sprint itself. Now, inside of epic you will have stories so if you think about it you can think about it as like um you know you have some books that you like let's say harry potter you harry potter has many books so all those books are essentially an epic but if you grab one book is like it's like a story so you know before you complete the whole epic you have to complete all the stories that are within it so then uh, there's a, a stories and the stories are going into backlog uh, backlog is like a library of books and it's never empty you keep on adding stories uh, new features new ideas new, new requests uh, uh, from uh, 
investors or customers, whatever. So essentially, backlog is never empty. And then what you drag from the backlog, um, you you put it into the sprint, and we will work on that just right now. Okay, so here is our uh, empty project. Let's go to backlog. So now I will start. Uh, I'm not creating a sprint yet. Let's add some stories. Okay, so uh, story story one. I'm not sure what it will be, but let's say uh, create manager manager manager's profile for Facebook, uh, and then maybe um, story two will add something like um, create managers login for Facebook and so on and let's maybe add a bug um, user can't log in with new uh, profile profile type so this is just very high level we'll go more in details um, later on but essentially before the uh, sprint starts, there's a meeting called sprint planning and all team members get together um, and developers assess the complexity of stories. So developers discuss, hey, how much time is going to take uh, to complete story one and how much time is going to take to complete story two. So let's say they talked and then they have to give it some points. Normally, complexity is measured in Fibonacci sequence. So, one, two, three, uh, five, eight, and 13 is the max. So, this each number is the sum of the previous two. So, one plus one uh, is two, then two plus one is three, three plus two is five, five plus three is eight, eight plus five is three. Uh, if you think about time frame, so uh, one point is one hour or so. There's like no exact uh, measurement because, and it will differ from place to place, but I'm just giving you uh, like, you know, uh, some assess, some example to, to base on like half a day, uh, three couple of days, days, five, um, maybe three days, eight, a week, 13, two weeks. So uh, if we know that our sprint is two weeks long, we can't have tickets larger than 13 points or a developer can't have a ticket that is larger than 13 points because it's going to take all his development time. So developers get together and they, uh, during the sprint planning, assess the complexity of stories. Um, and let's say this one will be... Okay, let, let's say... Do we have story points here? Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. Estimate maybe. Priority. Hmm. So let's see if, if I can add a story point here. Okay, story point estimate. Okay, so let's take let's take a look again at our stories. So they uh, they assess the complexity of the ticket, right? Together, and they would vote. One would say five, others say eight, and then they you know they discuss why. So let's say this one is. Uh, this one is five and we know our sprint can have only up to 13 okay so then this one it can be eight here right not not more 
uh, not more than eight. Otherwise, we will be over 13 points and it's 13 points per developer. So let's say we have only one developer uh, in our team for right now. So this will be eight. And now we're essentially at 18. Maybe as additional task we can fit in this bug because it's a small thing and maybe it's just like a zero half an hour or one really small. So then the stories from the backlog added uh, to the sprint. And again, we just created some stories right now, but actually backlog is never empty. There's a lot more stuff in there. Uh, it's sorted by priority, but we pulled this in. So then we start the sprint. And the Scrum Master, together as Product Manager, would start the sprint. Um, let's say our sprint will last two weeks, like a default time goal. Um, complete manager manager's profile. So we're creating like some login that has manager permission or manager accounts, whatever. So, okay, here we are. Uh, now sprint is started. Now, within the next two weeks, developers will work on the stories, right? Uh, once they work on the story, it will be in progress. Uh, then, and we need to update this board a little bit. Um, then, story moved into progress. Uh, then, from progress, it goes into QA. And the quality assurance engineer will verify that the story is implemented according to the requirements, story description. Uh, if some requirements are violated, they will open its a ticket or just send it back to development. So it will go back to developer and developers will fix it. Then it will be back in QA again. QA verify that everything works as expected. And then it goes to done. Same process with other story goes into development in QA into done and with the bug the same thing it goes into development then uh, QA verifies the bugs what was fixed would run some regression testing making sure no other things were broken and then also done so two weeks passed all of the work in the sprint was completed everything now uh, in done uh, great success if we take a look at our backlog uh, we see all they are they crossed out we can essentially two weeks past let's imagine two weeks past past we complete the sprint um there is a metric called burn down chart uh and essentially it's like a a chart that shows how much stories how much uh, points are left and when is the end of the sprint so as the time progresses you can see how it kind of goes down to zero from the 13 points down to zero or however many points was uh, was in the sprint, right? And then, yeah, so after uh, after that, there is sprint retrospective and discussion on, you know, how it went, what, what was the strong side, what was the, you know, the weak side, uh, was the estimate correct, uh, whether any wins or gains. So it, essentially it's ongoing thing where there's a discussion of the process, how it is going, how it can be improved. And then the new sprint starts and the same process all over again. So a new story is selected from the backlog. They estimated how complex they are, everything pulled in by priority. Those stories are part of an epic, uh, right? And then work is completed. You test it, developer, uh, developers fix bugs, you test it, another release, or just, you know, or maybe just uh, it sits in uh, a test environment or sandbox or some pre production environment waiting for a big release, like maybe released every three sprints. But again, um, now we can see a lot of companies moving even faster so they prefer to release smaller chunks of work uh weekly bi-weekly so maybe you will have a release like every two weeks and that's it that's pretty much scrum in nutshell uh and you know now the flow of scrum so if asked during an interview you'll be able to speak about it and uh you know say how it actually goes Scrum is popular. A lot of startups use Scrum. Um, I like Scrum. Uh, one problem with Scrum, I think that sometimes stories don't make it within a sprint, and then there's a decision to make. If you have pre-planned 
you know, work ahead for a sprint, you start pulling the stories and they don't make it within sprint, you can send them back to the backlog or the work kind of overflows into the next sprint. And then into the next sprint, you have your own work. So maybe uh, you can't complete that either. Some of the work for the second sprint, this the third sprint now, right before the release, you actually kind of uh, snow piled, uh, snowballed a bunch of stories that you can't complete on time before release. So there is that problem with Scrum that you know if you can't estimate correctly and the stories are not done by the end of sprint, if they overflow to the next one, and that happens again with the next sprint, uh, by release time, you might not actually cut it and have a proper release because not all of the functionality will be done. I think this is one, one of the main downsides of Scrum. It has to be organized really well to work well. Okay, so this was Alex USA Days. Hopefully you like this video. Hit like if you enjoyed it, subscribe. And in the playlist, there are more videos on how to become a Q engineer from scratch. Thanks for watching and bye-bye.